Hello, Dev Tips. This is a weekly Hello, web Dev development. Hello, Dev Tips. These are aliens. We're about to take over your planet of web development. That's what it sounded like. Uh, <laughs> Förlåt, sorry. All right, so it's close to the end of year, the year. A lot of things has happened during this year, and we've learned a lot, and a lot of things are going to change uh, in uh, at the start of next year. And uh, we thought that we'd just do an episode where we just talk about that before we head off to vacation. I'm David, and that was MPJ, and you're watching a weekly... A, wee a weekly show on web development it comes out on fridays at 0800 gmt this is an this is a show where we experiment with web web development mostly <laughs> fail but always learn something but not pronunciation you're watching <laughs> dev tips that's amazing so ah. this episode is recorded in 2018 but you're watching it in 2019 let's talk a little bit about what we've done during the year um like be before this like in 2017 like i was alone with this channel yeah right or or did you join in 2017 but behind the scenes no i was I mostly behind the scenes so actually yeah. for dev tips we recorded the react js prototyping series in august 2017 and i guess oh, that yeah, was sort right. of when i started like being more behind the scenes from of fun yeah. fun function and then we released those videos around this time last year on dev yeah. tips and then i started sort of like popping up a bit more in fun fun function as well uh and now yeah 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 because like around the time of uh like it was it was in 2018 that we actually took over dev tips right yes in april yeah so that's a huge change. Like we went from one channel to two channels, yeah. basically. And like the actual like, uh, and I also it was at the end of two thousand seventeen that the Patreon campaign launched. I think it was around. No, it was that around was also in August in twenty seventeen. Oh yeah, I think I quit my job in two thousand, still in two thousand seventeen. Yeah, but because you did, some con you did some consulting, and then it was like around this time a year ago. That was when you were like all in. Yeah. YouTube is my job, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. And my, I, I still have another job. I have another company, a consultancy company doing like analytics and SEO and stuff. So I'm still doing yeah. that, but I have more and more gone into making things for dev tips and fun function. And that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, uh, it's extremely exciting times. I can't believe that we're doing this as, as our jobs. Like, yeah. It, it was a plan like it was what we set out to do of course but like it's it's now finally happening yeah and of course it's thanks to the viewers that are watching and the sponsors yeah. that are supporting the show and uh, the patrons of fun fun function and uh yeah it's yeah, pretty it's cool really it's cool. pretty cool like... how dev tips like we took over from travis and travis had like a very design focused thing but he also has had sort of like the same style that you had with fun fun function like pretty talkative about explaining e examples and talking and having like this nice friendly feel of the channel and we're not Travis so when we came in we sort of like wanted to keep that thing but then make it to what we are interested in what we know more about which is a slightly more technical part of web development yeah it's um like I, I think that it it would it requires like us to be a little bit humble here and like really say thank you for sticking with us to the dev tips audience that uh that remain like a lot more people have remained than we thought to be honest yes um we uh we we like because taking over a youtube channel that's super weird really very strange uh who uh, does that have like, you ever heard about that no probably no. not <laughs> <laughs> no, Perhaps exactly. because it's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, like we really like, is that even done? Like YouTube is super personality uh, driven and uh, like basically YouTube channels are not taken over. So no. we we're very skeptical. Like, would this be even be able to do? Would we even be able to do this? Or would people accept us as new hosts? And, uh, uh, and I mean, 
not everybody did. Like a like a, a bunch of people did leave as we had anticipated. Yeah. Uh, but uh, way more people remained, and I like I think that that is to a large degree to the credit of Travis. Like he could have p- he picked between a lot of different possible people to take over the channel, and he figured that yeah, uh, fun fun function is the one that seems to get closest to what dev tips is so i think that while what we are delivering is not like the same thing of course because we're not the same people we don't know the same things a lot of the people that were watching dev tips were there for some of the things that we were already delivering on fun function yeah and then we did a lot of experimentation so we've tried out different formats i don't know if if how much of that is seen as a viewer but for us we've like had like oh i'm gonna try regular expressions because that is something that is pretty difficult but you don't really use it when you're like designing or doing web design with yeah. css and stuff and then we've tried other things like involving math sort of like the episode i did with the css animation physics and like just tried different things to see what you, the audience, enjoys the most, what we can see in the analytics, uh, and also what we find is fun to do, because when we think it's fun, it becomes a better episode, and then pe- more people like it, and all that stuff. Can you talk a little bit about your experience, like, as becoming a YouTuber, essentially? Like, uh, I mean, it was part of the, the plan to, for you to, t- like, to run dev tips from the, from the start, sort of, but like, what was it like for you to to do this? Like, what was your expectations going in, and what surprised you? I think that uh, so we had different plans for Dev Tips when we started. Like, I think we thought that we would do more like external collaborations and different kind of content. So I don't think I was that prepared to be that involved in production because yeah. I've been helping out with Fun Fun Function. And doing Sucker. like behind the scenes admin stuff and all that stuff. So I, I was not really that prepared to be in that much on screen. But the more you learn, it's fun. I think that learning something new is like, even though it's hard and like editing videos took a long time in the beginning and now it's quicker also because both the way you record and the way you plan a script sort of, or that each time you, you improve on that, then editing yeah. gets faster and all that stuff. Um, I lost track a bit to what I wanted to say. What I mean, I like, oh, how, like, how was the, like, how has your, inter- like, you, the interaction with the audience, like, did, was that, uh, did that fair, like, pan out the way you expected it to be? Yeah, I think so. I think that, uh, it's, what, what is so fun with creating content i don't know if this is just on youtube i think it's more on youtube because i don't know how much action there is in comments field on blogs and that's like nowadays but it's so yeah. fun that once you put something out like you get very very quick reactions so uh. sometimes you sort of like have a hunch hmm, when you're doing editing does this work and then you can see in the comments like if it did work or not worked and i think that is fun like how you get like that that qualitative input like we see in the data in the analytics how many views how much time watched where people drop off and all that stuff and how many people are like sharing an episode those like hard numbers that i'm used to from doing like analytics and seo but the whole comment thing is so much fun because that is gives that qualitative thing that you don't often get as an analyst (laughs) i don't know if that was the answer you were looking for but no no no. that's what i find is so much fun that you get both the hard numbers and the like soft opinions sort of mixed together and that's what's so cool to create things on youtube that the yeah. youtube has a community where people like giving out their opinions very fast and quick and some people are not very thoughtful what they're writing about uh, but many are and often yeah. those opinions are really good and especially the thing that when you put something out and ask for input you get so much input Yes. So if we don't know how to do something, which we most often don't, then we can just yeah, ask. Just... And then you, once the video is published and has been online for like 10 minutes, the top highlighted comment is like the best solution. 
Yep. That's cool. All right. So can we just look at uh, if you are do you screen uh, like are you recording your yep. screen? So let's just start from the beginning. So yeah. Travis said goodbye, and then I did that. Don't need jQuery. Here, here yeah, was so, a bunch of experimentation doing different, like, yeah. what kind of content. And also, I was pretty new at, like, being yeah. on screen. So that was a lot of, like, learning the process of producing videos. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, the, like, in the regex one... Uh, yeah. Yeah, like okay. No, we didn't. The Node.js basics. Yeah, a lot of that. That was a like simple clickbaity one that I did. Like, yeah, basics. <laughs> and also, yeah. let's build an online business. Was it's like a fun idea, but it just takes so much time, and it's difficult to find the right type of content because there's so much content that is like this type of content that don't get that many views. It's like oh, we have to do the server side render data thing. Then we have to add a database. There's so much boring things that aren't that inspiring and that perhaps you learn some things yeah. but uh, not that much and you've so it's a difficult concept we i want to do it more the online business but <clears throat> we'll see how that goes yeah you know like the, the the thing is like there's always that request like can't you do more real things like yeah. create a real project and like oh no, 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 no. and you do and then you like the first one pans out great, uh, but then, like, as you start adding more things, like, it just becomes more and more convoluted, and the format just kind of just slows to... It's just... Mm, it's really hard to figure out how to do real things. Yeah. And I think when we did the code review here, and then the animate with CSS, these two were the, like, on dev tips, the first like proper pair programming videos i think we already yeah. knew here that okay this is something that is fun for us to do and it's oh yeah fun for the viewer and yeah so we would probably want to do more about the pair programming thing yeah uh the pair programming thing was also like an insight of uh from like from my personal uh like how i work personally I, uh, and we also I, did that like many years ago here on Fun Fun Function, the pair program yeah. on Facebook Messenger. And we board. knew that that worked really yeah. well. Uh, and it was, but it was here that I really, it was just something that we postponed because we were like, oh man, we have to do Skype and two people and we have to schedule and la la la. So we put yeah. it off. But then I had this insight during the summer where I had like, I, I felt really bad during the summer and I had like a creative rut and I was like, what am I even doing with my life? And um, I was discussing with a friend and she said that, hey, like whenever I've been observing you, you've always been like the most happy and most engaged when you're doing things with other people. And like, yeah, and then it's probably not a good idea that I'm sitting around like staring alone into a camera in a, in a room. Yeah. Um, and then I was realized that, yeah, everything that I do should be prayer programmed. Yeah. Like as much as possible. And, and also the we, way... Like, that both you, you yourself learn and how you teach other people is often in a discussion format. Like how, yeah. how you have taught me a lot of concepts and things is basically we hang out for a weekend and you show me like some new trick or some new framework or some tool, a lot yeah. of frameworks and tools during the years. But yeah. that the thing that one developer shows another developer, one mentor teaches the apprentice, that whole concept is uh, pretty neat. Yeah, and it also like reflects like your yours and mine like our dynamic really well because yeah. you are really good at this whole like playing a little bit extra dumb. Yeah, like yes, like because you figure out okay, he's not really explaining this particularly well. Mm. Uh, let me just like be confused for the audience here so that uh, like ask he that actually that question that to, half uh, of the audience is already thinking about, but everyone is too afraid eh. to ask. Exactly. Yeah. I think that that the ask the audience that the question that the, ask the question that the audience uh, asks. Yeah. That is that I think that that is like perfectly um, captures it. Um, and I think that uh, like we really nailed it 
uh, accidentally with that um like now five days ago the trying docker for the first time video yeah yeah and that was that so was fun like... to do as well like it was fun because we did it and we just felt after we had recorded but this is the worst video ever we will have zero yes. views yes i was so like i was like this was a dreadful like a dreadful episode um but that's that's the thing with producing i um I was watching the behind the scenes of uh, South Park. Mm -hmm. Did you know that they produced an episode in six days? Oh, wow. They have like the that... most insane production schedule. Like Family Guy, four months per episode. Oh. South Park, six days. <laughs> it's yeah. just at, at a completely different level. And they always like, and he said they. Like, it's so often that he just says, like, I don't want to put this out. This is horrible. Mm. Like, uh, this is dreadful. But they always do. And it's sometimes great. Sometimes not as great. But, like, their production level is... Like, you just never know. Yeah. Like, when you release something, you almost never think it's good, to be honest. Yeah. So if you did, if you as a... In the audience enjoyed these pair programming uh, videos... Uh, you should stick around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a lot more of that because yeah. I feel like we we're kind of we feel like we are really figuring this thing out. So perhaps we should segue there into what we've learned from that and what we're gonna do moving forward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm almost thinking. That perhaps we can share the secret notion document. Yeah. Okay. The failing together one. Yeah. The secret document. Uh, in the, uh, we can put the link to this in the episode description so that you can uh, comment on it and provide us our feedback. Like read through it and write comments in the YouTube section. What you think of it. Because this is a new uh, like... The idea for the new content format that, uh, like, it, it's gonna be, like, not all episodes are gonna be like this, but this is gonna be, like, the meat of the channel. Yeah. Of the channels, really. Like, because yeah, so both it, of them are gonna have the same kind of style. Yeah. And sort of, like, I don't know what the difference is between dev tips and fun fun function. Like, dev tips is more focused around web development, and then fun fun function is more... Uh, I don't know, programming in general around JavaScript and functional programming and life around being a developer and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think that, like, the, the I think it's not so much... Uh, it's it's fo it's around who is watching and who we're targeting. Oh, yeah. Because, like, with fun, fun Function, I envision a developer that is one year into their first full-time, often web development job. And they're wondering, like, okay, now I'm a web develop web programmer, but what now? How do I broaden my horizons, and how do I actually like engross myself in development? Uh, Dev tips is more for people that are like, hey, I would like I'm doing something tangential to web development. I'm a designer, or perhaps like a forklift driver trying to like get into web development, and uh, like they're more like web. DevTips is more about, I see it more as moving into web development. And fun function is more like, hey, I'm in web development. How do I broaden myself? Yeah. So if when you were watching this, please write in the comments, like, how do you identify yourself? Do you identify yourself yeah. as like a web developer or a developer or designer or like WordPress uh, growth hacker? I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Right? Whatever you like. How do you see yourself? And why are you watching? Please write that. Yeah, that, that please do be, that. It's... We should make a poll or like a big survey, but that's a lot of work. Just write in the comments. <laughs> yeah, and if you agree with someone else's uh, comment, please like it. That's also like really helpful for oh, yeah, us to see. Of which, a... like, no, makes us a lot easier for us to see. Yeah, so what okay, do we have so... here, Matthias? Code yeah, name, like, failing um, together. Yeah, uh, so I'll just read it. <clears throat> <clears throat> mm. Failing Together is the experimental live recorded show format scheduled for spring 2019 of Fun Fun Function. 
that might also work for dev tips, where MPJ pair programs uh, pro pair programs with other programmers, mostly David. So let's break that down. Uh, it's... Here is the essential, the live recorded show format. Yes, that's a big, big thing. We're going live. Yeah. Um, so we're going to record these. These are kind of like the idea is to kind of record them as like, you know, how the Eurovision Song Contest uh, is recorded or like game shows often are recorded. Like it's recorded live on tape. It's a record shot before a live audience. Yeah. And they are uh, editing as they are shooting it. So what you're seeing is and be that edit is the thing that is also recorded and saved for later. They are not like precisely. adding any extracts to that. Precisely. Um, so we'll we try to do, do this, that. No. We haven't really done it yet. No. Uh, I Let mean, this is the idea. Like, no battle plan survives contact with the enemy. But this is like the direction where we're going. Yeah. Uh, so if we move on to the structure overview. Uh, and uh, like, it's going to be divided into a more task-oriented coding segment and a Fika segment. So as you might know, like Fika is this this thing in Sweden where we just sit down, relax, and and talk with our colleagues, have a bit of a pastry, often a kanelbulle, cinnamon bun, uh, and it's going to be like, yeah, it's it's chill, uh, yeah. like um, we're debating a little bit whether or not to have that before the coding segment or after it, but we're not sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, the coding segments, um, it's, um, we're going to talk about those a little bit later, but the point is that the coding segments, they're going to be lightly edited before they're released on YouTube. Uh, and we're going to call it coding VODs in this document. Uh, and the Fika segment, it's more like a live stream exclusive phenomenon. Uh, <clears throat> so m sometimes we might... <laughs> make Fika highlights and put them out as like YouTube videos, but, yeah, mostly, but mostly, mostly probably it will just be available to the live stream exclusive part. Yeah, and the live streams um, will take place on Twitch, right? Yeah. Yes. And why are we doing Twitch instead of YouTube? That's because Twitch is like has an audience that is known. They, they like live and they are used to it and we want to experiment more with Twitch. We know YouTube sort of and uh, yeah, it just seems natural to put it on Twitch. Yeah, use the right tool for the right job. Uh, like YouTube is not doing a horrible job with their streaming platform, but it still seems to me a little bit half-assed still yeah. compared to Twitch. Uh, and more importantly, it's it's mostly about like what the audience is used to. Like, YouTube uh, people on YouTube are gonna be used to YouTube, and people on Twitch are gonna be used to Twitch. Yeah. The theme is, I think, the most interesting part of this document because it distills down a lot what we've learned during this year. You yeah. wanna read it? Yeah. So. What sets failing together apart is that all shows are pair programmed and also leaves most failures in the edit. This is not by accident. The codename failing together refers to the two core values of the show, failing, in the sense that we want to highlight that software development is not a series of assembly instructions to follow, but rather an endless streams, stream of failures that we need to grow from. Together in the sense that we believe that modern software development is fundamentally a social skill and that the lone wolf genius programmer ideal is obsolete in a world of larger software teams. And that's also what we say now on DevTips, a weekly show on web development where we experiment, mostly fail and always learn because you learn from failure and not from successes that much. Yeah. And also failure is often more interesting, like it's more interesting to hear a story about a company that has failed, like Enron, that uh, that failed in some spectacular way, yeah. than or like the financial crisis. I mean, to finance, <laughs> you can hear that. <laughs> something that's failed is often more interesting than listening to how how something succeeded. And uh, it's also like one of the things that we hear repeatedly from the audience is that they just appreciate seeing failures. Yeah. Uh, like just from an emotional standpoint, uh, because 
Failures are so often hidden in today's society. People don't talk about their failures. Which makes you feel like horrible whenever you make mistakes. Mm. Uh, even though like success is only the end event of this series of chain of failures. Like failing, 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 failing is how you succeed. That's how we learn, how we grow. Yeah, exactly. How we learn. You learn through failure. Because often the success will result in say like, I don't know, three lines of code. Yeah. But from those three lines, you can't see the infinite number of changes that you did before you reached that very neat, beautiful, perfect construction. So you yes. don't really learn anything from it. You just see, oh, that's a way to, under to, to do it. But you don't understand how did you get to that final conclusion. Correct. So it's like if you're doing math, you just see the answer. X is 12. But you would probably have to for your math teacher show them how you reach that conclusion how you like change stuff hey, well, somebody turned off my light here i'm gonna it's actually, actually pretty cozy turn... let's actually keep it that way <laughs> <laughs> okay moving on coding segment yeah. so now the two segments what do we plan on having on these segments yeah so like what we've learned in um is that it's it's we have we have a very good dynamic where one person in the in when pair program is a navigator and one is a driver like this is a, like a standard setup when it comes to uh, pair programming uh, however what we've added is that the navigator is always the wiser and the uh, um the driver is always the person that don't doesn't know what they're doing yet so it's like the teacher and the and the learner. So if student. you see here, teaching CSS to a coder. So Matthias didn't know CSS, so he was the driver. He did the actual coding, and I sort of like gave directions as the navigator. Whereas here in Docker, I didn't know Docker that well, so Matthias was the navigator. So he knew Docker and told me sort of the directions, but I had to do the mistakes myself. Because yeah. that's how you learn, by doing the mistakes. Precisely. Um, so, and that was that because we have done a lot of, um, we learned that this dynamic was preferable because we did a lot of ep episodes where we just both didn't know what we were doing. We picked a task and then we were like flailing around with like the Twitter API and we didn't get anywhere. Uh, so we learned that that was a little bit too, a little bit too little preparation. Yeah. Uh, because it, it just didn't turn out. It's just not interesting to see people flail around like with an API. Like it's it, it's fun one time to see just the suffering, but it becomes old. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then we so as a response to that, we tried like um, basically just figuring out the problem beforehand. Uh, but then the problem is that it just becomes too much of a flow. It becomes boring to watch. Yeah, because we, we didn't fail. So these are both examples from fun, fun function. Yeah. We experienced with the Twitter API. And then there's this one video where we make a Reddit place clone. Our second attempt was not as fun to watch because we had done it once and we had understood how to do it. So we just built it. And that wasn't that uh, engaging and interesting. No, it was like watching a movie. Uh, like where a hero just walks into a building and yes captures the treasure is good kind of like indiana jones without any traps in the yeah. temple like it's just completely uninteresting to watch by the way side note like in skype like it's showing no signal on your camera no signal yeah could it be like that your like your hdmi cable has pop out or something <clears throat> so if I unshare my screen, you don't have a signal? No. No, it says no signal. Hmm. Did that just happen now? No, it happened a little while ago. I was waiting for it to return. Okay, but I, I will stop the recording and I will sh shut it off and no. then... Are you sure? Like, should we just, like, reconnect the camera or something? Like, perhaps the camera has turned off. All right. Perhaps it's gotten hot or something? Yeah, the camera <laughs> turned off. I will just reboot yeah. it. Yeah. You have pro like um, 
it's probably like you haven't like maybe you have not turned on like the stay on thing. Okay, so we have yeah. these two also, segments. Like, I, yeah, and uh, perhaps we should also mention that we have had, like, I tried this format when uh, doing a collaboration with Shiftman, and I've tried this format with Paul Lewis, and it works really well with guests as well. Yeah, because then you can have a like, guest a... that knows something, so I did, like, font loading. Perhaps I could invite the font loading expert, and then he can teach me about font loading or something like that. So we think that that could m make for interesting collaborations. Yeah, it's uh, like it's really great when the guest is the expert and is a navigator and teaches us something that we don't know. And the Fika segment, what is that about? Fika segment. The intensive task-oriented coding segment is followed by a more relaxed chatty segment that we call Fika. Uh, so the first thing that the, the Fika segment, while the, the, the coding segment is a little bit more focused on like doing something, we're, learn, we're trying to learn something, but the Fika segment is more for the audience, for, uh, for the community, so to speak. It's uh, audience inclusion. So the coding segment pays more attention to the task than the chat, the Fika segment is all about the audience. We use the chat as prompt to go back and forth with the audience if we can. Like, we, we actually have a conversation. Uh, and the goal of the Fika segment is to make viewers and members in particular uh, feel as part of the show and closer to us. So we use members as a generic term here because, like, we're still debating back and forth whether, like, Oh, is a person a Twitch subscriber? Is a person a patron? Is a person I like? You know, are we using the YouTube memberships platform? Uh, we're still not sure what to use here for dev tips, yeah. um, and uh, like uh, it's still up in the air to be honest. It, but it's it's more about like people that ship in a little bit more to the production and get stuff in in return, like basically patrons, sort of. Yeah. Um. And uh, yeah, member worship. Uh, and here's like where you get an insight into like our like <laughs> hardcore capitalization. Like this is how we think about the business a little bit. Uh, make no mistake, the Fika segment is a monetization product. While the Fika is both open and valuable for all, the Fika has a very heavy component of making members feel special. Uh, and making non-members see that being a member is awesome. Yeah, and what this is, is actually from Fun Fun Functions, because before you started the Patreon for Fun Fun Function, we started sort of trying to find like, how can we make videos that get a lot of watch time? Because that's how the YouTube algorithm like delivers a lot of ads, because to like manage to do this, we had to have a lot of watch time. So everything was, we. It like it drives you to make like clickbaity titles and uh, just make content that just tries you to stick around for longer. I'm saying that this on an extremely long video, but we just don't want to be that to be the driver of the content. But if the driver of the content is the members through Patreon or through YouTube memberships or yeah. whatever, and not be sponsors or ads and that stuff then we think that the content will be way better so we like the whole yeah. idea of patreon yeah like uh we we also like i think that we like the idea of relationships really yes. like uh we found that with our sponsors as well like our actually you know like brilliant and uh and wallaby like we see them more as supporters of the show and like developing long-term relationships with them uh, as like the backers of the show and yeah. like some we with that we talk about like a little bit even if they are not like explicitly sponsoring this episode uh has been like way better than thinking about like oh we have to create big episodes with a lot of views so that we can sell a lot of ads and that's also how we like to run business like we rather have a business with nice relationships where you like sort of like each and every one that you do business with is could be your friend or is your friend or becomes your friend like either if it's a sponsor or a viewer then it's more fun to just keep the business rolling yeah and then we talk a little bit about like the fika highlight vod's um 
we uh, like unlike the coding segment, which is likely edited and released as a VOD in its entirety. VOD, by the way, for you like that don't know about Twitch, like it's the term for video on demand. It's um, like the television it, industry is something that is not live streamed. That's a VOD. Yep. Um, the Fika segment is mostly a live stream exclusive. However, we might identify particularly good Fika parts and archive that footage for later use, which we then release as Fika highlight VODs. And we can use these in many ways. We can release them as member only videos. We can release them as backup videos when sick and we we're on a vacation. Um, or release them as live stream promotion. Uh, this is like probably not needed because the coding VODs will be pretty good promotion already, I think. I think that most, like, the the best thing, is, like, the best use of them is as these backup episodes. Like, right now, when we, we're on vacation or, where, or when we get sick, like, we just release nothing because we don't have backup stuff. Hmm. But, like, having, like, these little question tirades and to release, like, in space that would otherwise be no releases at all would be very valuable, I think. Yeah. And the length of these things will probably be pretty long. Yeah. Uh, it depends what we will do. But like six, pr we don't want to go above 60 minutes, but if the topic requires over six minutes, we see that on Coding Train, Daniel Schiffman, that he can have some long videos. And uh, it doesn't matter if it's good content, it's good content. And uh, yeah. Yeah. We see what. Yeah. We will experiment with that as well, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I both of us come from a school like of YouTube, like back in the day, like you needed to make 10 minute videos or you were screwed. Nobody would watch longer. But we've learned that if you make good stuff, people will uh, will watch it. Yeah. We've also learned that it's very hard to make something meaty that is real in anything like twin like making a 20 minute video. You just have to fake that a lot. Like you can't make a real programming thing in twenty minutes. Like it's just gonna be, like. And also, it fits with uh, how thing. we like to teach. Like so, when I teach analytics at like advertising schools and stuff, it's just like I like to have the approach that you just dive deep and code together. So that's like the the thing I do when I'm teaching. Anyways, I don't. I rarely do presentations. It's more like hands-on, yeah. practical. That's the way. And then you have a mentor. That's me in that case that helps you out. And that's sort of like what we try to convey here as well. Yeah. And it takes time. It takes time to learn. I, I, it's just the hard truth. If you want to learn, you have to engage with the time, unfortunately. Yeah. That's the way it is. But it's fun to learn, yeah. so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we will, t we will try to have the length somewhat consistent. Like mm. it might be long, but it it should be about the same length every time, so that you can, like, watch it at at breakfast or like build a routine. So mm. I hopefully we won't get something that varies between like thirty and ninety minutes. That would be very oh, no. annoying. Uh, it would be also be very annoying for us from a production standpoint. Yeah. So. And then uh, timing wise, when we do the live stream, will be like sort of what works for us is like during the work day so it's like yeah. around 2 3 p.m in the afternoon and that like sort of maps to like major cities across the world as well in like it's reasonable timing i guess yeah yeah like we can't if you please everybody a... we can just make it work no. for us yeah we might like vary the schedule like this it's it's tricky like do you do you vary the schedule so that some people can watch sometimes, or do you stay consistent so that people learn when the stream is? Yeah. Like it's, eh. we're not sure which day to record it. No. This is an interesting one. Like, should we record it on Monday mornings? That's and then release the episodes, uh, like later, or should we record it like on, uh, say Thursday and release the episodes on Monday? Like it's. We'll see what we happens. We don't really know. Yeah. We'll we'll play around. Um by the way, the, like regarding the length and the interactivity, like I just want to address the fact that we are aware that 
a lot of people following the channel will hate this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like because you know the the first if you if you look down like the list of episodes of Fun Fun Function and we sort them by popularity. Oops. Yeah, like we see here, like there's like these super uh, short, uh, very nicely condensed episodes, like reduce and high order functions and closures and bind and this and a sync await. Um, that a sync await? This a sync await, the what, why, and how. That's actually when it starts to go into longer territory. Yeah. Um, and they are very clean. They are. Mm. Um, how long is the sync wait, by the way? The 24 screen. minutes. And then it's oh, yeah. 15, 8, 6, 19 yeah. for Varlet and Cons. The GraphQL is 48. Mer Messenger yeah. Bot 57. Yeah. yeah. And like a lot of people want these like, okay, explain like this concept very tightly explain in, in this in this room. And I can't make those. No. Sorry, like it's uh, if you look at like the higher order functions video, like I look at that script, it's so tight. Like I I don't speak one unnecessary word. Like yeah. it's my magnum opus. Uh, but that is that that episode is literally two years of experience thinking about this uh, yeah. condensed into one video. I can't make that on a regular basis. That's impossible. Yeah. And I also question the value of videos like that. I mean, you can't learn higher order functions in 50 minutes. Yeah. Like you might think that you did watching someone, uh, but I mean, in fact, like you need to sit down and actually make higher order functions for hours for yourself. So mm. like the a video needs to inspire you to, mm. to do that. And I think so I that guess that's, the whole, that's our whole that. idea of everything. It's like we want you to actually learn and not just not just consume, but actually learn something. And that is yeah. two totally different things. Uh, then we, we want you to consume the videos, of course, and hang out in the chat and everything. That will be fun. Uh, so it's like both like a hangout, hanging out with us, and learn at the same time. That's sort of what we're aiming for. Not making a 10-minute video that will teach you what you think is everything about higher order functions. Exactly. We're done there, right? With intro and break videos, that's just some bullshit. Yeah, like that is just like a little bit of text, like that we, how we structure like explaining the show. Yeah. Um, because the whole mistakes thing is something that is, <laughs> we're very confident about it, but it like, it's a little bit jarring if you don't understand that we're gonna make mistakes. Yeah. Uh, like we have a lot more experience when we like introduce the audience to like, yeah, we might not succeed with this. Like, yeah, this is not gonna, we're gonna make a lot of mistakes here. Like we don't, we don't know this topic. We're exploring it together. Yeah. Um, if you like this episode, that is sort of what the, you would get in the Fika segment. Like this is more like, like a meta episode and yeah. uh, Fika part will be more meta sort of and discussing and hanging out and uh, then we will have the coding VODs that will be more like previous episodes and yeah. uh, that is sort of how we will experiment with this. Exactly. We'll see how that works out so like of course we want you to if you stick stuck around for this long write in comments about that stuff of course. Uh, we will experiment. This is the plan, and we will execute, but then the plan will change somewhere. So if you watch yeah. this video half a year from now, probably this is not really the same thing that we're doing then. Yeah, this will be super interesting for posterity purposes to see how, how, we, was, how we were thinking about things oh, back, yeah, in, actually. back in the day. Yeah, yeah and this yeah. would be so much more fun if we did this, not just you and me, but with a chat. Yes! I'm so excited about the streaming part. Like the streams that I've done, I've always been so f enormously happy and energetic after doing them. Yeah. Like it's just crazy how, uh, what it does for you.
And I think that like, bringing audience into this is going to be so great. I'm so excited about it. So that is 2019 on dev tips and fun, fun function. You should probably unsubscribe yeah. if you don't want to see any of this stuff. And if you watch this video <laughs> and still think it's a bad idea, unsubscribe. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. But like, and if you did, like, that's that's fine. We're grateful for your support so far, and yeah. uh, it 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 has been like it's been great. We are so incredibly humbled that we were allowed to do this as our jobs, and uh, we are really excited to see what we can do for the development community moving forward and pushing like this a little bit more human a little bit more social side of programming yeah okay see you audience ciao bye